Okay, now we're going to continue working with the R statistical software. And specifically, we're going to work with the Lehman Baseball Database and do some visualizations. So the objectives for this video are to load and use the Lehman Database in R. We will add some comments to code that I have uh, already written for you uh, to help you follow along this exercise, but I want to highlight the use of the pound sign. And we're also going to use the dollar sign to highlight or select a specific column from the database. And finally, we will visualize some of this information uh, using the bar plot and the histogram functions. So in our studio, I wanted to show you a few ways to load data. So one way you can do it just is by going to File, Import Data Set, uh, depending on what uh, data source you have. Uh, in our case, the Lehman database is in comma separated values format. So we would click on that and we would have this interface where we could go to our hard drive and in my case it's in the downloads menu and baseball data bank and say I could I could import any of these files. So that's one way of doing it. Another way of doing it is with in the top right quadrant there's an import data set button which gives you the same uh, menu as before. You can browse to your hard drive and find the data. And here are all my CSV files from the Lehman database. Okay, a third way of doing this is on the bottom right, there's the Files tab. And you can select the files here. I've already set this as my working directory by going to More and setting it as my working directory. So the R software defaults to this directory to look for files. So a fourth way of doing this is by uh, connecting directly to the Lehman database which is already integrated into R. So what I want to provide you with is a little software program that I wrote um, in R to help you follow along. So it's this uh, file called R part 2 loading Lehman and doing bar graphs. And you notice that the file extension is .R that means that this particular file is readable in R. Now you'll notice here uh, it's already uh, containing a set of instructions. The first thing I want you to point out is that anything with a pound sign at the beginning of that line turns the text into green which means that it's a comment. It means that it's, it's just for my own notes or for the user to read uh, some commentary and understand what is about to come next. So this is just for me to label, uh, for the file to actually uh, make sense and not just be a bunch of software code. So um, what this interface allows us to do is actually run code with this button. It moves whatever uh, items I'm either highlighting with my mouse or wherever my cursor resides. So if my cursor is in row one or in line one and I hit run, it will move the information from line one down here to the console. So I'll show you. I will hit run. And you'll notice that the very first it skipped immediately to the very first line of code, which was install dot packages layman. You'll notice that my computer is now connecting to the uh, layman website, 
and it's downloading the zip files. And now it's telling me that it has downloaded uh, all the Lehman database onto a temporary uh, directory in my computer. So the next uh, line is to load the library of uh, Lehman commands. So I'm going to put my cursor there at uh, row 10 and I'm going to hit run. And this now allows me to access a series of commands that are part of the Lehman library. So as you recall, the Lehman database contains several files. We worked previously with the batting file, the batting CSV. Today we're going to work with the teams file. So the comment here on my code is to load the teams database, you need to either type in data parentheses quotation mark teams quotation mark close parentheses you need to either type this down here in R or you can simply put your cursor in that row and hit run and you'll notice now that up here it's already loaded the uh, the teams database okay now in order for me to double check that that's the case we're going to view the data in just a moment but I wanted to uh, give you a little insight that if you wanted to load other types of data there are several data sets available for you to uh, mess around with in R so if you just typed in data open parentheses close parentheses it'll actually show you a variety of data sets that already are accessible to you in R all sorts of really interesting things. Down here is what we're interested in, the Lehman database. And remember, it has all of these files, and we're only going to work with the team database today. Okay, so going back to our console. So in order for me to confirm that the teams database has been loaded, the command is view teams. It's basically telling our show me that data. I'm going to hit run so it's only processing that line of, of, of code and you'll notice that the comma separated value file appears here. This is great. I can scroll up and down and see all the data and it also confirms here on the right that there are 2,805 observations and there are 48 variables. These 48 variables are essentially the columns. Okay? And um, the other thing to point out is that if I was to expand this uh, Teams uh, database, I could also see all the definitions of all the 48 variables. Okay. So what I'm going to focus on today is the variable called W, which is wins. These are the wins uh, for that particular team in the history of uh, baseball from uh, the beginning of data collection, which was, I believe, 1840. 1871, excuse me, 140 years ago, uh, 1871 was the first year where this data was collected. So if I was just interested in looking at the wins, the W column in this database, the command would be view the team's database and then dollar sign W. And what dollar sign W tells me is show me only the W column within the team's database. Okay, So let's execute this command and you're going to see, let's just hit run, and you're going to see uh, what our returns is only the wins column. Okay, So that is dollar sign W is a subset of the larger database, which is just team. So basically it just showed me this column here, W. Okay, so now I'm going to create a new variable because I'm going to do some uh, 
perform some operations on. And this variable is going to be called wins. Okay. So wins equals the W column, that is dollar sign W, in the team's database. Okay. So let's run that command. And you'll see, okay, there is a variable called wins now that I can now perform some calculations on. So the first calculation I want to perform is a maximum. So I want to know what the maximum number of wins has been for a Major League Baseball team. Okay, So if we run that command, R is going to return to me 116. So that means that the largest number of wins for a team since 1871 has been 116 games. Now let's check that. If we go to the teams, to our data here, and I hit the W column, what it does is it sorts it by that column. So here it's sorted from lowest to highest. You'll see that some teams actually had zero wins. In 1872, they only played uh, a short season. If I was to hit that column again, it would resort it from highest to lowest. So confirming here, there were actually two teams in the history of baseball who had 116 wins. The 1906 uh, Chicago Cubs and the 2001 Seattle Mariners. You'll notice, though, that the length of their season was different. We're going to come back to this point. 162 games is what is played now, but back in, in the early 1900s, they only played 155 games. Okay, so that, that point is going to be relevant in just a moment when we look at the data and a, a visualization of the data. Now, I also um, want to know something else. What is the average number of wins for our, all MLB teams? So the, the, the command is mean parentheses wins and R returns to me 74.7 so on average teams have won 74 games in the history of baseball but again this number doesn't account for the fact that the length of the season is different in different periods of, uh, of the ba of history of the baseball seasons Okay, now I want to show a visualization of the wins column using a histogram. So the command is very simple, hist parentheses wins. Let me also point out though that R is case sensitive, meaning that if I was to type lowercase wins, this would give me an error. It's already telling me, hey, there's no variable called wins lowercase. The variable is called wins with an uppercase w. So that's important to remember. It, it is case sensitive. Okay, so when we uh, run this command, you'll notice that a histogram is created on the right. So what this means is that the uh, range and the statistical distribution of wins is evident. Very few teams uh, are on the extremes. Very few teams have low number of wins. Very few teams have a high number of wins. And the average, as we know, is uh, around 74. So right around here is the average number of wins in a baseball season. Okay. okay the last thing that I want to do is uh, show a plot. And in this case, I wanted to see uh, how long the baseball season is. So there's a column in this database called G. That means the number of games uh, that teams play. So let me show you uh, what that looks like. Uh, this is this column here, G. You'll notice that in some cases it's 162, uh, like it is in, in current times. In some cases it's 155, in some cases it's 153 or 52. So I want you to get a, a visual appreciation of the number of games that, typical, uh, that, that teams typically play. And, and I want to plot this uh, over time. And so the variable in the database 
that is time is year ID. So dollar sign year ID extracts that column from the database of teams, and then dollar sign G extracts that column from the database teams. So year ID, uh, let me go back to the data and show it to you, is this column here. That is the year in which the season took place. Okay, so we're going to see a plot of this year ID on the horizontal axis and this G in the vertical axis. And the command is just plot parentheses whatever X variable you want on the horizontal axis listed first and whatever Y variable you want uh, you list second. So let's hit run and we're going to see a plot of this. You'll see time is uh, on the horizontal axis and the number of games is on the vertical axis. So the first thing you'll notice is that in the early days of baseball, uh, there were very few games played. So looking at the uh, average it doesn't really tell you the entire story. You almost have to divide the data into decades or into seasons and see uh, how many games were being played uh, in that time period in baseball. And as baseball became more popular, you'll see that the number of games increased dramatically. And it sort of stayed flat uh, for several years, from the 1900s to about the 1960s. So here in this period, they played uh, about 155 games per season. And then it jumped in the 1960s to what is currently 162 games per season. Now you'll notice there are a couple of instances here. This, these are the uh, 1994 uh, season and this is the 1981 season. So what happened in these two cases is there was a, a strike, a player strike. So this is the player strike of 1994 where there was a disagreement between the players and the owners uh, on the collective bargaining agreement and so the, the players uh, walked out and stopped playing, so it was a shorter season. And then uh, this was the uh, strike of 1981. So again, when we're looking at comparing teams, the point I wanted to make is you have to look at how many games were played. So it's not enough to just look at the count statistic of how many wins a team had. You have to look at the rate statistic, which is what is the winning percentage. And we will uh, look at that particular question uh, in the next video.